UTPA Women's Soccer opens WAC play with a bang. We take you to all the action. The UTPA Athletic Director reaches his fifth anniversary. We take a look back at the last five years with Chris King. And the Bronx welcome a new women's golf coach with one heck of a resume. This is Bronx Country. Hey everyone and welcome to Bronx Country, I'm Jonah Goldberg. After a historic non-conference season that saw the women's soccer team burst onto the scene with a 6-1-3 record, the Bronx were itching to play their WAC opener and they got to do it against one of the oldest programs in the WAC, New Mexico State. Pick it up in the 59th minute, Bronx down 1-0, not anymore. Andrea Barrera with her seventh goal of the season, match tied at one. Six minutes later, Hanna Spetz takes over. Puts the Bronx up two to one, and we'll see more from her right now. Last week, we told you about the Swedish connection. Well, Frida Farstad Eriksson with the corner kick, and she finds her countryman Spetz, who finishes. Spetz's first career multi-goal match leads to her first WAC Offensive Player of the Week award. Aubrey Coley had a strong match in goal, making four stops to earn her third WAC Defensive Player of the Week award. Bronx win, three to one. The first goal was, I think, a bit of luck, actually. Uh, they hit it on the ref, and uh, I just shoot it. Um, it was a great shot, actually. I'm pleased with it. Um, and uh, we're both uh, coaches have been on me to shoot a lot, so I finally did it and scored. Uh, second goal, um, great corner for Frida, absolutely. Uh, her assist is absolutely fantastic, and I just have to put it in. So, yeah, two goals in the victory, so it's great. Hannah Spetz was fantastic, but of course she's been fantastic the whole season, so her performance was no surprise. I mean, it was awesome. I, we did it. I'm so proud. I'm so happy to be a part of this team. It's absolutely fantastic. We've been working so hard for this. Uh, I mean, we'll be playing really good in preseason, and to be able to continue and actually win first conference game, which is historical, it's absolutely fantastic. And the crowd, well, I mean, even though it's been raining, it's, they're here to support us, and it feels absolutely great. Like I said before, the pressure is all on New Mexico State. They had to win. Their chance of making the playoffs now are a struggle. So for us, it, just, uh, it was a great performance. The players played fantastic. Everyone worked very hard. Uh, it's a credit to their, their work ethic and the, uh, their, uh, you know, their dedication to this program. Here's a look at the WAC standings. The Bronx are tied for first place at the end of opening weekend. The Bronx are back in action on Friday and Sunday when they visit Chicago State and Kansas City. We're going to be very well prepared for them as well. We're going to take it one game at a time and play Chicago State first and, and, and try to get a win there. That will really get us a real big step close to the playoffs. So, um, and then from there again, we, we continue to try to win games in the WAC and get a higher seed and surprise some people. Allison Smith came off the bench to play 17 minutes for the Bronx against New Mexico State. She started six times and has scored a goal, has an assist. Despite growing up on the West Coast, Smith has had her family present for all of her home matches. Gabriela Moreno has the story. Allison Smith brought a number of things with her when she moved down to Edinburgh to play for the UTPA women's soccer team. Her school supplies, her electronics, her personal belongings, and her parents. That's right, Allison's parents moved here all the way from Orange, California to support their daughter in her career. When I took my recruiting trip down here, my dad just kind of like, Looked, he liked the area and he just wanted something a little different. So he was like, you know, why not? Like, let's just check it out. And so then they started to look for houses and then we, you know, sold our house and then we moved here. So that was cool. While most students are eager to leave home and get away from mom and dad for a while, Allison couldn't be happier that her parents came along with her. For my parents to be down here means everything. I mean, they, they love me. They've supported me throughout my entire soccer career. They've supported my brother and they're just... They're so great and they're so loving and they're so supportive of me and I love them so much. 
Though things aren't all that different in Edinburgh than they are in Orange, California for Allison, she says that there's one thing missing from her new home. The most significant thing I had to leave behind was definitely my sister and my nephew because we're a very close family and um, they, they mean everything to me and so it was really hard to leave them. But, you know, I'm, I'm okay now. Despite having to play in the South Texas heat, Allison was happy to have been recruited to play for the Bronx and has found comfort in her new teammates. I was really excited to be recruited for the Bronx team because it's just such a it was just such a good opportunity and you know coach Glad was just very positive and I really liked that and I liked the new program and the Nike and everything just fit really well. My new teammates and I are like so close. We're sisters. I mean, I can talk to them about anything. They are my they're like my family now and that's the best kind of relationship I could ask for. Reporting for Bronx Country, I'm Gabriela Moreno. UTPA Volleyball also opening whack play this past week, starting with Bakersfield and the start of a big week for Alicia Watson. Pick it up in the first set. Watson serving, and she serves up an ace. Next serve, same result. And then next serve, are you kidding me? Three aces in a row for Watson, Bronx up 7-6. Now, the Roadrunners went on to take the set, so we move to the second, and it's like deja vu all over again. Bronx up 2-0. Next serve, that just happened. Career high tying five aces for Watson, Bronx up 3-0. Later in the set, we're tied at 12, and now it's Kira Hill's turn. One point later, it's Hill again, ace again. A little later on, it's Mary Kay Clark, and you may be sensing a theme. The Bronx finished with eight aces. They're up 18-15. Move ahead. Now it's set point, and Haley Durham finishes it. Just as effective as an ace, match tied to one. Third set, Bronx down 15-20. But then Watson comes up with kills not once, but twice. And then Durham with kills to bring the Bronx within two, and then one. The Bronx actually tied the set before falling 23-25 as the Roadrunners win the match 3-1. Durham led the Bronx with 15 kills and 4 blocks. Watson finished with 14 kills, 8 digs, 5 aces, and 2 blocks. Anjanae Janda also in double figures with 12 kills. Career high, 46 assists for Clark. 41 hours later, the Bronx welcomed Grand Canyon to town. Pick it up late in the first set, Bronx down 24. And then it's all elementary for Alicia Watson. So Maria Kleefolk takes over the serve, and she's in no mood to share. A setting error gets the Bronx within two. And then a block by Haley Durham and De'Ara Reynolds gets the Bronx within one. After timeout, the Bronx take advantage of attack errors, including this one by Megan Burns to end it. Bronx win 26-24. They lead the match 1-0. Skip ahead to the third set. Match tied to one and the Bronx exploding out of the gate as this Kira Hill kill puts them up 11 to three. Lopes on the comeback trail now. We're tied at 19, but Durham having none of that. Puts the Bronx up 20-19. And then 21-20. Now the Bronx are down 21-22 when Angela Janda sends it down, but three errors in a row put the Lopes up two to one. Fourth set, the Bronx again explode out of the gate as Durham comes up with the block. Bronx up 12-4, and this time, that eight-point advantage isn't going anywhere. Watson puts the Bronx up 16-8, and then Janda makes it 18-10. Durham and Reynolds on the block here, 21-13 Bronx. Now it's set point, and Cleefolk puts an exclamation on it. We're heading to a fifth set. Middle of the set, Reynolds sends it down, Bronx up 7-4. A little later on, we're tied at eight when Clepo comes up with the kill. And then Watson. Now it's 14-13. Match point for the Bronx, and Durham finishes the job. The Bronx pick up their first WAC win of the year, 3-2 over Grand Canyon. Season I, four Bronx in double figures with kills as Durham had 16, Watson 14, Clepo 12, and Janda 10. Perhaps more impressively was the passing, as four Bronx reached double figures in digs, including career highs for Nasheen Merchant with 22, Macy Singleton with 21, and Watson with 19. First double-double of the season for Watson, 
who also earned the program's first WAC Player of the Week award. You know, she's she's a weapon for us. Uh, we knew that when we recruited her. You know, she's she's t really taken to to some coaching keys and, and some some key phrases to really get her fired up and get her going. Uh, she did that in that fourth and fifth set, especially there in the fifth. We made a couple minor adjustments, and uh, you know, as soon as we hit the right phrases that she was looking for, you know, she she lit up again. But uh, you know, she's been a go-to. She'll be a go-to for us. Uh, you know, we that's that's a tough ball to stop coming from that left arm. We actually worked on defense last practice the whole time, and so we were on cross patterns I think that transferred clearly really well in the game so for the kids to fight as hard as they did uh, push through some some injuries and, and illnesses and things like that you know everything kind of came together uh, we knew and we talked about it taking everybody tonight and uh, you know it certainly did that I think our talent has gotten a lot more well-rounded we're really deep in our bench which is great and I think just our belief in one another and our ability to you know shake things off and just to, when we really believe how good we are no one can stop us Here's what the WAC standings look like. The Bronx tied for third, half a match behind Utah Valley, and one back of New Mexico State. The Bronx are back in action on Thursday and Saturday when they visit Seattle and Utah Valley. We'll, we'll get on the road on Wednesday, play at Seattle. Uh, we'll take a look at them this weekend. We've looked at a, a little bit of film, but uh, you know it's that time of year where you know we can really start gearing on, on some things and building off of what we did today, and that's really what we need to do. You know, we'll, we'll touch on a few things with Seattle, but it's really about us and, and our execution. Five years ago, almost to the day, Chris King stepped foot on the UTPA campus as the director of athletics for his first day of work. Coming up on Bronc Country, we look back at the last five years and then what's ahead for UTPA athletics. We pursue excellence in the classroom and strive to achieve our potential. We compete on the field with integrity, on the court with respect, and in the pool with distinction. We are strong leaders in our community and gain values from our biggest fans. We continue the legacy of commitment to our universities, to our coaches, to our teammates, and most importantly to you. We learn, we compete, we inspire. We are the Western Athletic Conference. The ball on the right wing goes for the tie. And he does it again! Nolan straight to the hoop, ties the game! All with the three, with two, the desperation he goes in! Get your Bronx basketball season tickets now by calling 665-2221 or logging on to utpabronx.com. This commercial is brought to you by Lax Furniture, an official sponsor of the University of Texas Pan American Intercollegiate Athletics. On September 2nd, 2009, UTPA Athletics introduced Chris King as the new director of athletics. One month later, he started the task of rebuilding the UTPA Department of Intercollegiate Athletics. And to say the least, it's been a successful ride. Vince Erickson has the story. Bronx athletes finishing well. But they all really start here at the offices of the UTPA Department of Intercollegiate Athletics. Now behind this door in the corner office is Athletic Director Chris King, who recently celebrated his five-year anniversary as the athletic director here at UTPA. So I had the chance to sit down with him and let him discuss UTPA's proud athletic past, its present, and its future as UTRGV Athletics. Can you believe it's been five years? Five years. September 2nd, 2009 was the press conference. October 1, 2009 was the first day I sat in this chair. Wow. So yeah. since that time, first sitting down to your sitting down now, talk about the journey that that, that has been. Well, you know, for me, you know, I was a first-time athletic director. I was also, you know, first-time father because my wife and I had our first child three weeks after I arrived here. So it's sort of like drinking water on a fire hose uh, right off the bat, uh, doing both of those at the same time. Uh, you know, it's been a terrific five years. Uh, we've had unprecedented growth, whether it was revenues, whether it's been the budget, the new facilities, getting in the wax, starting new sports, hiring new coaches. Uh, it's been an exciting uh, but challenging five years. The excitement has overtaken the challenges. Uh, we've created those challenges into opportunities, and I think you've seen the success over the, pre the previous five years because of that. Sure. Let's create some monuments during your, during your, uh, yeah. during your time, the things you're most proud of. Well, I think the first year is, is uh, unveiling a strategic operational plan one year to the date when I arrived. 
uh, that's a, that was a major undertaking. Uh, we were going through a transitional phase with some staffing issues as well. So to be able to unveil that and put a roadmap in place for a lot of the young administrators and for the vision for the university to help uh, support us, uh, whether it was budget needs, whether it was facilities renovations, um, I think that was a major monumental um, uh, part of our history in the last three years. I mean, I think without a shadow of a doubt, the biggest, um, most monumental uh, um, deal for us is getting into the Western Athletic Conference and the WAC Conference. Without that, we would still be spiraling backwards. The future for UTPA Athletics is as, you, as you're seeing them through the strategic plans you've done. Well, it's no longer going to be the future UTP Athletics. It's going to be UTRGV Athletics. And so those are things that I've already kind of talked to uh, initially with the, the new president coming in, Dr. Guy Bailey. Um, you know, we've had several discussions on the future and vision, which still needs to be defined. You know, we're going through that same process and putting together a new strategic plan, which should be unveiled sometime in late fall, potentially at the latest uh, early spring of 2015 for the future of UTRGB athletics. But we need to grow as much as we've grown in the last five years. We need to grow two or threefold over the next five to really truly be successful. And then I think the other big uh, component for our success is, is really going to be bridging the gap between Brownsville and, of course, with the McAllen Edinburgh for our mission area. I think, you know, we've got to we've got to really unite these communities with the um, a combination of UTB, the RAC, and Harlingen, and then, of course, uh, UTPA. That's going to be a major, major component for the success of UTRGB athletics. But I know that this athletic program is going to profit a lot from this merger of the institutions into the, the new university, and that's exciting because that's sort of what drove me when I first came here was, you know, where are we going to be in five years? Well, now I can say that same question. You know, where are we going to be in five years? And I know it's going to be like drinking water out of a fire hose the next five years. A lot to look forward to, indeed. I'm Vince Erickson reporting for Bronc Country. Now you heard Chris talk about the future. How about the future of UTPA athletics facilities? That story next week on Bronc Country. But first, across country, taking part in a meet at Texas A&M Corpus Christi, both the men and women taking fourth place in the team competitions. Junior Jose Juan Wells led the men with a third place finish out of 57 runners. Leo Dominguez also in the upper half, finishing 19th. 47 runners on the women's side, and Jennifer Zapata paced the Bronx for the second meet in a row by coming in eighth. Teresa Sova and Savannah Antley also with strong showings for the Bronx. Next up, the 26th annual Chili Pepper Festival at Arkansas. Three weeks ago, we told you that the Bronx hired a new women's golf coach with impressive credentials. Next on Bronx Country, we meet Risa Alexander. Risa Alexander arrived at UTPA to begin her term as the head coach of the Bronx women's golf team last week, and her considerable experience is already making an impact on the team. Nancy Pateo has more. Oh, good shot. Nice. nice After play. having been head coach at Oregon State University for 24 years, Coach Risa Alexander has moved to UTPA as the new head women's golf coach. Well, I'm just looking forward to coaching. Coach Alexander's passion for the game started at a very young age. I live about three blocks from the country club, and I spent every waking moment there since I've been eight. So, yeah, so I just loved it. She hopes to spread that passion and positivity towards the game to the members of the team. I think um, she will improve the golf game in everyone because she knows how to she knows how to get in their mental game and their strategy, and I think that's really good for every golfer. She really gets us involved. Like I, I, I can already see the girls' determination changing, and I'm just really excited about tournament play. Although the move from Oregon was a big one, Coach Alexander is happy about the change. It's been exciting and fun and a new adventure in my life, and I'm looking forward to it. Coach Alexander's coaching style is already beginning to motivate the team. What I've seen is that she has a lot of drills, and she knows how to, she knows how to work with everyone. She knows how to help you out, and I think that's really helpful for everyone. She just has a different way of getting us motivated, and... She, she's really introducing a lot of new drills that we've never seen before, and we're really excited about tournaments. Reporting for Bronx Country, I am Nancy Boteo. The Bronx opened their season last week at Louisiana Monroe, 
coming in 12th place in their only event before Coach Alexander took over. Strong showing for Melissa Bernal, coming in 8th place out of 73 golfers. The Bronx are back in action next week at Sam Houston State. Coach Alexander, not the only new coach at UTPA this year. Gabe Henry joined the women's basketball staff as an assistant coach a few weeks ago. Romeo Villarreal has the story. When Coach Tidwell was looking for a new assistant coach, he knew he wanted somebody with a lot of experience in a lot of different places, which led him straight to assistant coach Gabe Henry. I've worked at a lot of various different levels. You know, I'm 30 years old now, uh, and I have had experience at the Division I level, the Division II level, uh, NAI level, and then uh, the junior college level. So I've worked at a lot of different you know, universities, a lot of different colleges, um, a lot of great places. And, you know, I, it, I, I just think that that's allowed me to experience, you know, okay, working with a big budget compared to working with a small budget. Um, it, it's just allowed me to be flexible and uh, allowed me the opportunity to, you know, make this transition a lot easier for me, you know, because most of the stuff, how things are ran here, I've seen it similar you know, it's ran similar at other places. Upon arrival, Coach Henry knew UTPA was a perfect match for him for a wide range of reasons. When, when I first got here and saw the uh, uh, campus and met the team, uh, first thing, when I met, saw, saw the campus, I just thought, man, this is a, a beautiful campus. Uh, full of palm trees. I've been out in West Texas where we don't have any trees and we don't have any green grass. and. I was just like, wow, you know, beautiful buildings, uh, infrastructure. Um, and then when I met the coaching staff, I just thought, wow, this is, this would be a really fun staff to work with. Uh, you know, obviously with Coach Tidwell being the seasoned vet that he is, uh, a great one to learn from. Uh, but at the same time, learning a lot from uh, Hannah Burleson and uh, from Anthony Anderson. For Bronx Country, this is Romeo Villadiel. Just four weeks left in the Bronc Athletic Fund donor drive. Don't wait, act now. Donate to the Bronc Athletic Fund today. You can become a member of the BAF for just $50 a year. All of the money raised goes directly to student athlete scholarships. So visit broncathleticfund.com today to see how you can make a meaningful impact on the lives of student athletes. We pursue excellence in the classroom and strive to achieve our potential. We compete on the field with integrity, on the court with respect. And in the pool with distinction. We are strong leaders in our community and gain values from our biggest fans. We continue the legacy of commitment to our universities, to our coaches, to our teammates, and most importantly to you. We learn, we compete, we inspire. We are the Western Athletic Conference. The ball on the right wing goes for the tie. And he does it again! Nolan straight to the hoop. Ties the game! All with the three. With two, the desperation he goes in! Jack Fogler from half court! Brunson! Brunson! Get your Bronx basketball season tickets now by calling 665 2221 or logging on to utpabronx.com. This commercial is brought to you by Lax Furniture, an official sponsor of the University of Texas Pan American Intercollegiate Athletics. Here's what's coming up for the Bronx. Women's soccer visits Chicago State on Friday and Kansas City on Sunday. Volleyball is at Seattle, Utah Valley, and Texas Southern. Cross country heads to the Chili Pepper Festival. Men's tennis is off to Lamar. And both golf teams take part in the Harold Funston Invitational at Sam Houston State. We want to thank you for stamping your passport in Bronx country this week. Schedule another visit for next week. But until then... Go Bronx! excellence in the classroom and strive to achieve our potential. We compete on the field with integrity, on the court with respect, 
and in the pool with distinction. We are strong leaders in our community and gain values from our biggest fans. We continue the legacy of commitment to our universities, to our coaches, to our teammates, and most importantly to you. We learn, we compete, we inspire. We are the Western Athletic Conference. The ball the right wing goes for the tie. And he does it again! Nolan straight to the hoop. Yeah. Ties the game! All with the three, with two, the desperation he goes in! Jack Bowler from Amport! Brunswick! Brunswick! Get your Bronx basketball season tickets now by calling 665-2221 or logging on to utpabronx.com. This commercial is brought to you by Lax Furniture, an official sponsor of the University of Texas Pan American Intercollegiate Athletics.